What's happening, guys? All right, it's day number two or 10 or 20. I don't know how far along I am in, in this now, but uh, getting the short block back together. Really excited, really making strides. I was really excited last night. Made some uh, good strides, got the crankshaft in, got the clearance to set. So tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hopefully get the short block completely assembled. It's going to take me but a few minutes, so I'm going to get this thing together. If you have never run aluminum rods, I've already got this bearing snapped in there, but in the cap, there's a dowel pin, and this, this locator pin is there to keep these bearings from spinning. Uh, typically, on a normal uh, steel rod, you don't have that locator pin. And so I think what happens is, is as these things get hot, aluminum is gonna be a little more sensitive to the heat. And so it's gonna swell up some. And so is it, as it swells up, it needs that dial locator to actually keep the bearings in place. I imagine they loosen up quite a bit. If you, if you take this thing apart hot, that bearing would probably be pretty loose in the cap. I mean, it still has a press fit. You still have to snap it down in there, but um, it makes it, you know, to where it holds it. So here's the rods. I already got the rod hung on the, the piston. The rings are on it. So we're close to getting ready to assemble this thing. Um, now you'll, if you notice, there's, this is a set of aluminum rods, of course, these are GRPs. The bearing is kind of offset away from that chamfered edge like I was showing you one time before. This rod is machined so that the cap fits perfectly. And that just helps hold the, the cap in place so it doesn't move as it's expanding. And so we're gonna get all the bearings in the rods and then we're gonna start hanging the rods in the motor. So we're pretty excited. So we're gonna try to make some progress tonight. nice very nice so that turned out pretty good wasn't too bad i had a couple cylinders i had a couple issues with it initially so this is the type of ring compressor i used tonight it works really good typically fits down pretty good around the o-rings uh you don't have to pull the o-rings out of the block that's the reason i use this one tonight it does get a pretty good grip on the piston though so you have to be careful you can't over tighten it or you'll have issues so of all the piston installers I've ever used, this one typically works the best. It's the easiest to use, but if you have O-rings sticking out of the block, it usually doesn't work too well. These are also fitted for your specific piston. So if you have a 4.125 bore, you'll have one for that. And if you have a 4.155 bore, you'll need one for that one as well. So one is not universal for all pistons. Believe it or not, this is probably one of my favorites as well. The crinkle design does not have a lot of contact on the side of the piston, so there's not a lot of friction. So the ring and the piston really compresses easily, and it slides right down into the bore, effortlessly usually. But the problem is, again, you cannot have O-rings sticking out of the block. The block has to be flat. But for the most part, I mean, it went together pretty good. Um, all, of, all of the pistons are in the hole. I have an assembled short block. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, the O-ring kept popping out over here on this side. I guess the, the groove has somehow got bigger. I'm going to have to get a little bit of super glue or either find a, a little bit bigger wire. That's a stainless steel 041 wire. So I'm going to see if I can find like a 045. Um, I know they make an 051, but I don't know if I can get an 051 down in the hole. 
Um, it's got copper gaskets on it, so I mean, I've got to have some type of retaining wire. Um, I guess I've just been making so much horsepower, I have elongated the O ring groove and made it bigger. Is that it? No, probably not. I don't know why it's doing that. That sure is interesting. But anyway, so we got the, the bottom end together. Very successful evening. Um, we'll go ahead and try to get the camshaft in it. I do remember I forgot to bring silicone, so I'm not going to be able to get the front end completely together. Um, actually, I'm not going to be able to get anything in because the cover has got to go on first. So I guess I'm done for the night. Well, good progress. Uh, go home early uh, tonight. The wife will be happy. And you can sleeve this see and you can see this is the cylinder that we got sleeved this last time so that one is a perfect bore now so everything looked good it's coming along nice uh richard done a jam up job on it for me i'm gonna roll it over real fast so you can see the bottom end crank this thing doesn't spin very good i guess it's because i don't have a handle um it rolled over pretty fine i was able to uh, turn it over by hand fairly easy um so everything seems to be proper torques on the main caps the studs in the middle the 7 16 were torqued to 75 foot pounds the ones on the outer the bolts those were all torqued to 65 foot pounds the little ones up here in the front the little baby studs or bolts those were torqued to 40 pounds the big ones in the back the main cap and this is one of the features of a dark iron eagle block uh, most of the aftermarket blocks that have billet caps on the center ones, but the end one is a cast one. The Dart Iron Eagle, it is billet in the back. So that's a, a good feature. I mean, it's pretty sturdy, pretty heavy duty. So these are a little larger. These were torqued to, these are half inch. So these were torqued to 100 foot pounds. And there again, these little small ones here were torqued to uh, 65. Now going down into the rods, I do it in a two-step process usually. Uh, I zinged them up there with the impact gun. I'm sure some people were cringing as I was doing that, but I was just putting just a little bit of torque on them just to get them set. And I always go down the line when I'm installing the pistons. Number one, number three, number five, number seven. And then that way I don't have to roll the motor back and forth. Uh, and then I'll do flip it over and I'll do two, four, six, and eight. So it's not too bad when I do it that way. Um, but you have to, you know, semi tighten up the, the little gun there goes down probably 10, 15 foot pounds of torque. I just let it click just a little bit, uh, just so it holds them in place. And then once I get them all on there, then I'm checking the, the side to side clearance, making sure nothing is, is binding, making sure I've got them all uh, clearance good. Um, also got to look down in there where, where the rod is meeting the piston to make sure you got good clearance down there. You don't want it too tight. Uh, you know, it could be problematic if it's a little tight. So I torque my, my bolts in two steps. So I went to 45 foot pounds first. I'll go 45 and then 45 and then 75 and 75. And GRPs, so they just recommend using uh, motor oil, 30 weight motor oil for, for their torque process. So that's what I did. And uh, so, I mean, you know, everything went together smoothly. I didn't have any issues. There was a couple cylinders, like I was saying, I had uh, some problems with the, um, the piston going down in the hole, my, my ring compressor. That's like a 1955 style ring compressor. But it works good generally. But I think what was happening, it was this last side and you saw the O-ring popped out. I think what was happening is the compressor was getting stuck on the O-ring just because of the, the sizing of the, the spring compressor and the pistons and where the O-ring was located. And um, so, you know, that, that ended up going okay. I think that's probably why, you know, the O-ring come out is because my compressor kept hitting it. So I'm gonna have to do um, either get some thicker wire, or either I might have to get a couple drops of um, I get some J, JB Weld. No, that's probably not a good idea for the, for the O ring wire. I don't know. I, I got to figure out a way to get it to stick down in there. The groove's just a little bit loose. Um, you know, that was a new piece of wire I tried to put in on the last time, but it's still popping out. So I may end up with a you know a couple pieces, uh, get some super glue and uh, glue it in as I go down. Um, once it, once the head gasket gets on it, the, uh, head is not cut for a receiver groove. So, I mean, it's going to hold down, uh, you know, it's going to bite into the gasket and it's going to go down in that, that groove and it's going to stay. Um, so, I mean, it's not that big a deal. Just got to make sure it doesn't move or come out when I'm putting the head on, when I'm putting the head gasket on. Otherwise that could be a, an issue. But we made good progress. I'm happy. I'm excited. Getting more excited. Uh, 
probably this weekend is not going to happen for firing it up. But uh, ne next week for sure, uh, there's a couple races, uh, Galat Thursday, and then next Saturday and Sunday, I think there's a race that I can get into. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I made a lot of progress tonight. Very happy. Uh, wrapping it up for me tonight. Uh, Going to go to the house. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that bell and you'll get the notifications. Thanks for watching. Y'all go fast and get some win likes.